Hey, everybody. It is the 12th day of, of June, 2023. Hope you're doing okay. This is Craig Moser and wanted to give you about five or 10 minutes uh, of market brief, hopefully not 10, and uh, look through where we are uh, this month so far in the various indices that we follow. So let's get started. Okie dokie. So in no particular order, let's look first at oil prices. So we can see this might, might not exactly be the prices. The only thing that I can buy you actual oil with is this particular ETN right here, which is United States Oil Fund Limited Partnership, USO. So what I want you to see is the pattern, not so much the, the price. But oil has, has gone up a whole lot, to make it simple, and has declined somewhat. So it has come off of its market high, which was really in 2022, about this time last year. And, and we're paying a little bit less at the pump for oil. So if you're an investor, eh, you don't like this too much. If you are uh, someone that has to use this, which most of us are, it's nice to see these prices subside some off of the highs. As, as we look back over history, though, uh, if we look back for five years, because this chart shows two years, but if we look back over five years, you can see prices were much higher back in 2018. Um, the Saudis uh, decided to punish us, I guess is what it was, by pushing the price of oil way down back in 2020. And now the prices have, have come back up to a level which is more in line with, with what we we think at least, you know, the prices for a barrel of oil should be. So enough said. Let's take a look at um, gold. So gold as an investment. Gold uh, back in 2018 was very low. The price uh, was not um, as high, obviously. And we saw the, the price of gold spike right here, 8-6-2020. So typically the price of gold goes up a lot when there's more fear around. And so, you know, you can kind of get a feel COVID still flexing its muscles back in in uh, September, you know, August of last, of 2020. And since then, we've seen this, seen this sideways sort of churn up and down and up and down and up and down. It's easy for the people that sell fear to tell you you need to pile all your money in here because, you know, the company's the country's going uh, to zero and all that sort of stuff, and you need to get gun beans, band-aids, and bullets, if you will. Uh, but at the end of it, gold is holding its own up here from a level that it's really been in since right in here, somewhere in the range of about 2020. So take it for what it's worth. Oh boy. So let's look next at our friends in Europe, Australia, and the Far East. So across the pond, if you will, Great Britain, France. Germany, Spain, those types of countries, uh, along with uh, Australia, Japan, Canada, they make up this index. So it's MSCI is Morgan Stanley, Morgan Stanley Citigroup Index, Europe, Europe, Australia, and the Far East. So we're using iShares for the example, but all of them will look exactly the same. And so you can see that it seems like this range right here, and we're looking back for five whole years, right in here is about where it's been gravitating to. We haven't seen a whole lot of upside, but I tell you what we have seen, we, we've seen some pretty good downside in these markets. So as you look at uh, right here, we're still down 15% off of the high that was, was generated probably right in here. Let me put this over here a little further. Uh, right in here around uh, September-ish of 2021. I think that's 2021, yep. And so we're down about 14% from there and have had much, much greater declines, but not right now. It was down 34% at one time, COVID dropped it down. At the end of it, we're not seeing any real upside that's sustainable, except for this stimulus-induced uh, run-up that we had in 2021. All right, emerging markets. So the, the big players here, of course, are Russia, India, China, and that bunch right there from its high is down about 20, 28%, something like that, but much better than it has been. Most everything has rallied some from uh, where we were back in in uh, October-ish of 2022. We've seen a substantial move up from there. I was going to try to move that line around, but it doesn't want to do that, so forgive me. 
what people call the stock market here is usually the S&P 500. So we'll use that example. And you can see in comparison to most of these other indices, the S&P has been more resilient. So before you go, hey, this is great, and all the stock markets are back up, that's not necessarily the, the case. When you look at the breadth of the um, rally in this particular uh, index, what you also see is it's very driven by some specific companies. So, you know, if you look at the, the Teslas, the NVIDIAs, the Metas, the Microsofts, um, Apples, uh, Googles, those are the stocks that have had most of this rally since this market bottom right here, which was again, right around the late September, early October range. So it's a tech driven uh, rally. It's not necessarily a broad, everybody's moving up rally at this point. So hopefully that will catch on and we will get more of that, but so far it's not the case. If you look at the Dow, it's a little more lethargic than the other indexes. And then as we look at the bond market, it's kind of an interesting thing to look at. So let me find my bond piece here. So used to be Lehman Brothers bond aggregate. You'd hear that all the time. Well, Lehman Brothers went out of business in 08, but it's still the same index, the core U.S. aggregate bond. And we're using, again, iShares as our example there. So the yields are in the three-ish range because there's a lot of bonds that were issued a long time ago in this portfolio, along with the new ones that come out. So bonds uh, from a price perspective have not rallied back up. As a matter of fact, you're getting pretty high yields. Um, let's say that on corporates, you're getting around five and on treasuries, you're getting high fours. Uh, maybe maybe some fives on some in the three-year window. We'll just have to take a look day to day. But what we're saying is the prices declined a lot from this market high back here in 2020. And in part, because after this COVID event for bonds, the federal government backstopped most of the bonds for quite a while. Now that they're pricing based on what the market will bear and interest rates are up, the price of the bonds have declined some. So what's the guess going forward? What's the crystal ball? Nobody knows. What I will tell you is that it is an interesting next few months in that we have a lot of money on the sidelines. So that seems to bolster the markets. We also have um, an interesting employment situation to where a lot of people have yet to go back to work. So there's plenty of employment potential but as I talk to business owners throughout the, um, my book, uh, most people are saying we're, we're not able to hire people that will work right now. So it's an interesting, interesting combination of things. But we're seeing slowdowns in the real estate market. I can show you that. If you look at residential, it looks like this. Here's an index. So this is the iShares residential and multi-sector real estate off of its high declining but again, if you look over a five-year chart, it's about where it should be, up and down and up and down. This is about right. And if you just do the real estate index, which takes in more of the other things, such as uh, commercial and, and uh, multifamily and that type of thing, again, just a sideways sort of churn. This right here, again, was a lot of money trying to find something that would go up in value. So just understand that you know it, it's not necessarily that the market should be in this trend that was pretty well overdone because of so much money print all right don't want to bore you to tears but our guess is that we'll probably see a recession in the next two quarters uh my guess is it'll be shallow uh, i think probably sometime before the end of the year uh, we'll see another rate hike I don't think, of course, I could be wrong on this, but I don't think that Jay Powell will raise rates at this next meeting, which is just next day or so. But I mean, he could, but I doubt it. So just, just be comfortable in the fact that if you're owning things now, bonds, structured income notes, and things like that, that pay a high yield, you don't have to deal with a lot of the stock market volatility. Um, that makes it a little easier to deal with. If you have questions, if you want to chat with me, uh, give us a call, 336-448-1086. And with that, I'm going to let you guys go for the rest of the day. And I hope you're having a great uh, June.